She is the holiest deity in the heavens, sleeping in the endless darkness of the vast ocean. Once awakened, only to learn that they are going to redeem the resentful beings who have been stained with sin. System. He's so pitiful. As the purest deity in the world, the host must really want to redeem him. Sueling's eyebrows and eyes were cold, and a warm smile appeared at the corner of her mouth. She looked at the system with an indifferent expression and said, Dead people don't turn black. System. Dot. System. We are so pitiful, the host should go and redeem him by holding his thigh. Swaling wiped her bloodstained fingertips clean, and the male and female protagonists who were reborn and traversed trembled as they knelt down on the ground. She casually spoke, it's quite pitiful. System. Dot. She has always been the object he wants to pull down from the altar, but when her radiance shone into his dark and decaying life, he was willing to restrain his sharpness and let go of all his sins. Sueling's smile at the corner of her mouth was warm and gentle, not to be touched by her fingers, but her holy and pure white wings turned black in an instant. I never said I was pure and harmless. Keywords of the Novel the villainous female supporting character of fast wearing is a bug without pop ups. The villainous female supporting character of fast wearing is a complete download of bugs. And the villainous female supporting character of fast wearing is the latest chapter on bugs. Chapter 1 The Return of a Thousand Golds. 1. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 The Return of a Thousand Golds. 1. Drop. Drop. Host binding. Binding failed, system. The system fell into a strange silence around the person sleeping in the ice coffin in front of it. The person in the ice coffin has delicate and warm eyebrows and eyes, fair skin but a sickly state of not seeing sunlight all year round. They are dressed in a classical European style long dress, embroidered with surging waves on the collar and hem, complementing the deep and quiet blue sea around them, and their beauty is breathtaking. 007 Lord, 007 Lord. The system is a very small elf, with a transparent body and emitting a faint glow, making it difficult to see its appearance clearly. At this moment it was anxiously strung around the ice coffin, constantly contacting the 007 adult it admired in its mind. Well, I'm here. The response to System 1087 was a gentle voice as gentle as the snow of the Tian Shan Mountains. He slowly stepped out of the vortex, dressed in white clothes like jade, but with a touch of elegance and ancient charm that could suit the heart. 1087 is useless, we can't contract the host, it's causing trouble for Mr. 007. The system spoke with grievances, and the light surrounding it dimmed a bit. If she had such a good contract, it wouldn't be worth our attention, 007 comforted and lightly tapped 1087, then turned his gaze back to the ice coffin. Little girl, you're dead. The voice was not very loud, but it was transmitted through the ice coffin to the sleeping Swayling, who frowned with some annoyance. Looking at the person who had no response, 007 couldn't resist and reminded him again, you're dead. Swayling originally wanted to ignore the external noise and continue to sleep, but the sound kept echoing in her ears. You're dead. You're dead. You're just dead. Sui Ling coldly opened her eyes, with a pair of blood-colored eyes flowing with dim light. She smiled and couldn't hear her emotions. You came down to this vast sea just to curse me to death. 007 calmly lied, but little girl, you're really dead. Sui Ling reached out and opened the ice coffin, leaning against the soft cushion inside, with an elegant posture. I am a deity and will not die. But it will fall, so in order to keep our only deity alive, the heavenly way has given you a chance. 007 clearly didn't want to get bogged down in the question of whether Swayling was dead or not, so he went straight to the point and handed her the scroll. Swayling raised her eyes slightly and looked at 007 in front of her. Although she had a refined and noble demeanor that had been ingrained in her bones, she could sense a sense of treacherous business. She casually glanced at the scroll, 
and the prompts inside and outside were all asking her to be a good person to counterattack. For Sui Ling, who is known as the kindest deity in the world, the task was very simple. A stream of water lingered around her fingertips, causing a slight ripple in the once silent deep sea. The task is fine, but the system. I want you. Sui Ling's expression remained unchanged, with her elegant and dignified demeanor. Her silver long hair slowly rippled along the water flow, and her blood-like red eyes were clearly enchanting. However, due to the peaceful and quiet aura in the divine bloodline, her whole body appeared inexplicably warm and jade-like. How could that be? System 1087 anxiously jumped out, even though it was only the size of a thumb, it still blocked 007. 007 was born during the chaos of the world and is the first system in the myriad planes, governing countless small worlds and being the highest authority among all systems. Mr. 007 is so noble and elegant, how can he devote himself to becoming a beginner's guidance system? System 1087 was full of displeasure and flew around swaling with anger. Can't you do it? Then forget it. Sueling's eyes drooped slightly, and her furry head lowered, looking somewhat disheartened. At this moment, her elegant appearance finally became more lively. Also. Not really. It's not possible, but it depends on Mr. 007. System 1087 saw Sui Ling with a sad expression, thinking that her words had stimulated her, silently retreated a step, but still insisted on defending 007's interests. Of course not a problem, little girl. 007's fingertips wrapped around the golden contract, sending it to Sui Ling. His demeanor was like a green pond in the Tian Shan Mountains, indifferent and warm. The dim light in Sueling's eyes flickered slightly, and a sense of interest arose in her heart. Being able to take action in her abyss, it seemed that 007 was also a considerable figure. She raised her hand and just touched the golden contract, when a brute force pulled her into space, eagerly sending her into the world. Sui Ling, dot. Are you in a hurry to oppress employees so quickly? The coolness spread throughout her body, with wet hair sticking to her face. Sui Ling frowned slightly uncomfortable, and her ears were chattering and chattering, as if it could awaken the hatred-filled heart deep inside. Isn't she really dead? She's still a young lady at least, we can't explain it. What are you worried about, Miss Mao, who comes from the countryside and dies as soon as she dies? The man's disdainful and disdainful gaze flowed over Sui Ling, and his words were filled with a strong sense of disdain. Moreover, if you dare to provoke Miss Chinyue, she will either die or not. Sui Ling moved her fingers and her confused consciousness gradually returned. She slowly sat up from the ground and looked calmly at the man in front of her. You. Didn't you. Die. Sui Ling pursed her lips, her eyes moist with a gentle spring vibe, but as she looked at the person in front of her, she felt an invisible chill. So, do you really want me to die? The girl was still green and her voice was tender, slightly innocent. The man was clearly frightened by the sudden change in temperament on Sui Ling's body, but upon reflection, he realized that she was just an 18 year old girl and there was nothing to fear. He boldly walked toward Sui Ling. Don't come over, you'll die. Sui Ling rubbed her sore shoulder with a gentle and distant tone, unable to hear any threat. Since you dare to push Miss Chinyue, then be prepared to die. The man ignored Sui Ling's words, and when he mentioned Shen Chinyue, his eyes flashed with sincere love, fanatical and loyal. Sui Ling was moved by his love and gave a rather insincere applause, saying, What a beautiful love, but unfortunately, I didn't even touch the hand of the goddess. Sui Ling watched as the man stepped into her designated territory, her originally indifferent face beaming with a smile, and a stone in her hand swirled around her fingertips. She looked at the man with red eyes stimulated, and a fierce wind blew in her hands. However, in an instant, a blood-stained stone was deeply engraved on his forehead. You. You. Ghosts. 
The timid and weak man on the other side sat on the ground in fear, looking at the gentle and refined appearance of the girl, his heart trembling uncontrollably. Don't you run yet. I'm a ghost. Sueling's eyes were filled with dark waves, her clear brown pupils tinged with evil energy. The timid man reacted and rushed out of the warehouse, looking disheveled. Sueling sat down again, carefully looking at the body in front of her. She lifted her eyelids uninteresting, tapping her thighs with her fingers, and the air fell silent. The timid 1087 shrank in space, hesitating to leave, and a cold call made him burst out in an instant. What I'm shouting. Seems to be your 007 adult. Sueling's eyebrows and eyes were indifferent, staring at the little elf flying wildly in front of her. 1087 felt a bit guilty, and the light on his body was sometimes dim and bright, revealing his hesitation. Mr. 007. He has something to attend to and may need to come back later. 1087 stuttered a few times before shouting loudly, with a look of death at him. Later. How late? Sui Ling looked as if she had expected, suddenly laughing with a hint of spring breeze, feeling a bit puzzled when she saw 1087. About five years. Ten years. It could also be two, three. Planes. System 1087 said as it spoke, the sound became quieter, and deceiving the host of Swaling was really not what it wanted to do. Is this considered breaking the agreement? Your Mr. 007 has been doing this all along. It's really a waste of the skin of the Tian Shan Mu Shui. Swaling shook her head with some regret, her face full of contempt. No way. The person who made the contract with you was actually Mr. 007, humph. I won't talk to you anymore. Let's watch your plot. In an instant, 1087 was filled with a dazzling aura, and the wings behind him vigorously flapped a few times before disappearing into the air, leaving only one sentence for Sui Ling. Sui Ling didn't care, whether there was a system or not didn't matter to her. She just knew that 007 hadn't stood her up, and she curved her lips in satisfaction. Suddenly, an electronic blue screen flashed in front of me, with several large black characters printed on the screen. Do you want to accept the plot? Sui Ling looked at the word, no, and felt a little itchy in her hands, but at least it was the first world. She didn't want to wave her head, so she honestly clicked, yes. Broken memories flooded in, her head a bit dizzy, and Sui Ling just frowned slightly with a faint expression. The original name was Li Sui Ling, and she grew up in a small alley that could be considered a slum. She lived in poverty and simplicity, unable to eat enough. Although the mother of the original owner did not treat her well, she did not mistreat her and coldly raised her into adulthood. But at the age of 18, Li Sui Ling was suddenly brought back to the Shen family and learned that she was the eldest lady of the Shen family group, so she changed her name to Shen Sui Ling. Shen Sui Ling, the true daughter, has returned, and Shen Qingyue naturally realizes that she is not the biological daughter of the Shen family. However, she has been praised by the stars since childhood, so she naturally does not want to return to that dirty slum. Shen's mother couldn't bear to let her spoiled daughter go into that cannibalistic environment. Thinking that the Shen family didn't lack the money to support one more person, she left her behind. But I didn't want this day to be the beginning of Shen Suailing's nightmare. End of this chapter Chapter 2 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 2 The original owner grew up in a poor place and suddenly stepped into the upper class, carrying a sense of inferiority. He often timidly hid behind the crowd, serving as the backdrop for Shen Qingyue. With such a weak and humble sister as a backdrop, Shen Qingyue undoubtedly became the most dazzling pearl. Shen Qingyue is always confident and bright, the focus of everyone. And Shen Sui Ling, like a startled bird, kept a low voice and had a strange and silent temperament, which made her even more unpleasant to others. Shen's parents naturally prefer the lovable Shen Qingyue, but Shen Qingyue's ambition goes beyond that. She wants her parents to love her, and even more so, 
she wants Shen to belong only to her. So she began to design Shen Suiling, playing the role of little white flower multiple times. She was delicate and weak, with a look of being afraid of the real young lady and not daring to plead justice. Therefore, Shen Suiling was tortured to death by Shen Qingyue's pursuers, but due to her reserved nature, she dared not tell the news to her father and mother. This time, Shen Qingyue fell down the stairs and framed the original owner, causing her fanatical pursuers to torment her by sinking her into the river, ultimately resulting in her death and being burned down by a fire. Sui Ling received the plot and raised her eyebrows with emotion, as if there was still an indelible resentment in her chest. She raised her hand and patted her heart comfortingly, without saying anything. He casually ignited the corpse burning props prepared on the ground, and the flames burst forth in an instant, illuminating his gentle face. After leaving the warehouse, Sui Ling realized that the original owner had nothing on him, no money, and no phone. They had all been lost when he was sunk in the river. She pursed her lips and silently called out 1087, but no one agreed. Sui Ling, dot. I don't want to walk. I don't want to walk. I don't want to walk. Sui Ling walked painfully towards the Shen family, dragging her thin and weak body slowly. After walking for a long distance, her legs were suddenly wrapped in a burst of fluorescence, relieving the soreness. A childlike voice sounded arrogantly and inexperienced, as a system, I cannot intervene in the affairs of the small world, so I cannot conjure up any items for you, but giving some help is still possible. This sound quickly disappeared, no matter how Sui Ling called it, it did not appear, but the fluorescence in her legs was unusually warm and never weakened by half. Sui Ling said, words speak louder than words. By the time we arrived at the Shen family, night had already fallen, and stars dotted the dark sky with light. As soon as Sui Ling entered the door, she saw a happy look on her face as a whole family. Shen's mother was picking vegetables for Shen Qingyue, and even though there were fine lines around her eyes, she couldn't resist the woman's beauty. Shen's father silently ate his meal, but in silence, he also placed the peeled shrimp in Shen's mother's bowl, which caused Shen Qingyue to joke for a while. Suiling's body was not tidy, her clothes looked dry and wrinkled due to not being treated in a timely manner after getting wet, and her yellow hair due to malnutrition was also somewhat messy. If it weren't for her warm and elegant face, no one would have thought she was a homeless person. Shen's father didn't immediately care whether Sui Ling was injured, but instead looked at her messy appearance and scolded her in a deep voice. What did you do? Faced with Shen's father's gaze, Sui Ling remained unaffected and politely replied, My daughter has been abducted and sunk into the river. The surrounding space solidified for an instant. Shen's mother's previously indifferent gaze became worried, but when she touched Sui Ling's dirty clothes, she stopped trying to comfort her. Shen's father listened to the girl's calm words and looked up at Sui Ling. In just a moment, his eagle eyes narrowed delicately. Sui Ling's eyes were as moist as jade, peaceful and indifferent, yet she could capture evil energy in the faint and translucent dim light. It's very complicated. This was the first time Shen's father had truly noticed Sui Ling. He looked at her slender figure and gradually let go of his worries, urging her to quickly go upstairs and change clothes. Even if his gaze doesn't look simple, in the end it's just a little girl. His cowardly child, unable to stir up waves. Sui Ling saw Shen's mother's expression, movements, and demeanor, cold and calm. She turned around and stepped up the stairs, her spine straight. Feeling the warm water splashing on her body, Sui Ling narrowed her eyes happily. She likes the feeling of water flowing through her body, soft and authentic. Drop, task delivery successful. The electronic blue screen flickered in front of Sui Ling again, but this time there were two more words for the task, with a dazzling red dot hanging in the upper right corner of the task. Sui Ling, dot. Do you still have a task? Isn't it just a counterattack? The scroll clearly does not indicate this point. After taking a shower, Sui Ling lazily leaned against the bedside, then took the time to take on tasks. Redemption is a wise strategy Sui Ling, dot. 
I can't protect myself, but I'm trying to save others. Little sister can do it. I will cheer for you. What sounded was a cute and cheerful child voice, with a girl's softness. 1087 was probably afraid that Sui Ling would get angry when she heard this task, so she temporarily asked other systems to take over. Sui Ling lowered her eyes slightly and did not express her attitude towards this task. Instead, she listened attentively to the systematic introduction, pondered for a long time, and readily agreed. Sitting in the space with 1087, 1083 swayed her two white and tender calves. Her blonde hair was slightly curled, and her delicate face, like a doll, was slightly wrinkled. Isn't this host easy to talk to? It doesn't look as scary as you said. The more 1083 spoke, the more incredulous the tone became. Can it be that you don't want to work and let me be your free labor? 1087 exploded upon hearing it, its wings rapidly flapping, quickly defending itself. No, no. She. She's really scary. Exquisite 1083 glanced at the timid and anxious system 1087 and remained silent. This system is really useless. This is a conclusion that has been pondered for a long time. Dear little sister, this is when Jinx's information. Wishing you a smooth mission and a happy day, little sister. Thank you. Sui Ling looked at the information in front of her, which was like a novel, and politely expressed her gratitude. You're welcome, little sister. Is there anything else I can help you with? I will do my best to support you. Not anymore. Sui Ling's gentle voice gave a feeling of spring breeze brushing her face, making 1083 sound a bit ethereal. 1083 glanced at 1087 with sparkling eyes, and walked towards the main divine area with a delicate princess dress, walking briskly. 1087, dot. Ah ah ah. Host Sui Ling, how can you engage in gender discrimination? Sui Ling was unaware of the small details in the heart of system 1087. She carefully opened the information on Wen Jingsa and gently tapped her wrist bone with her slender and fair hands. What a pity. A hint of compassion appeared in Sui Ling's eyes, and the temperament of a god of goodness reappeared. Her smile deepened at the corner of her mouth, and crazy fun spread under the compassionate pupils. 1087 was originally immersed in self-injustice, but through the screen, he saw Sui Ling's face full of sympathy, and a holy glow seemed to linger around him. Mission life suddenly has hope. 1087 raised his hand excitedly, feeling the radiance of the way ahead for Sui Ling's sudden enlightenment. End of this chapter Chapter 3 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 3 you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 The Return of a Thousand Golds. 3. When Sui Ling woke up, it was already noon and she lay in bed, her eyebrows and eyes hazy and scattered. A sudden bell rang, and Sui Ling raised her hand and pressed the connect button, her voice carrying a lazy sound from just waking up. Hmm. Are you still sleeping? Sister. It's already twelve o'clock. Are you still the obediently swaling in my heart? A teenage voice came with a strong and unbelievable tone. Swaling raised her hand and rubbed her eyebrows, as if still digesting what the young man had said. Since the original owner returned to the Shen family, no one has called her Lee Swaling anymore. It seems that she is a friend she met before. Tomorrow's university report, are you? Coming. The boy over there paused for a moment, afraid of piercing Sui Ling's pain, and asked very cautiously. Hmm. Sui Ling didn't say much and responded indifferently. The original owner had excellent grades, enough to be admitted to a university, but her family was poor and not enough to support her to go to college. She also went to freshman year because of the scholarship she had accumulated in high school. But she remembers that Shin's father seemed to have paid for the original owner's tuition. That's good. If you can't afford it in the future, remember to come and see me, young master. I'll help you pay for it. Sui Ling. Dot. 
she remembers that the young friend of the original owner was not very wealthy, right? Sui Ling stood up to wash herself up, picked up the membership card on the table, and prepared to buy some clothes for herself, while also cutting off the bangs that covered her eyes from the original owner. It's both earthy and gloomy. Sui Ling looked at herself in the mirror and stroked the face that resembled her original appearance, condemning the original owner for wasting so much. This card was gifted by Shen's mother to compensate for the suffering suffered by the original owner for so many years. Shen Sui Ling felt embarrassed to use it. But Sui Ling doesn't know. She first asked her family driver to drive to the phone store to buy a new phone, or chose the latest and most expensive one, regardless of whether the money was worth it. With Shen Qingyue's repeated framing, Shen Suailing's reputation in the upper-class family has deteriorated, and even the employees of these luxury stores look down on her. Suailing's face was indifferent and she didn't care about other people's opinions. She picked out the ones she liked and bought them, spending hundreds of thousands just on jewelry. She placed the jewelry in the hand of the bodyguard she had just hired, and her voice was faint, like the tinkling of a spring in a green mountain. Remember. Pick someone who looks good to me and help me pay the bill. Hmm. The bodyguard was tall and imposing, with a fierce gaze. At this moment, he obediently followed Sui Lingxing, looking particularly pleased. What are you doing with me? Go check out. Sui Ling's eyebrows twitched as she looked at the stunned bodyguard in front of her. This person is big, doesn't he have a big heart? He doesn't look very smart. Sui Ling glanced at the thick bangs and handed the card to the staff guarding the entrance. Seeing that it was a membership card, he immediately released it. The front is the members section. Have a nice day, Mississippi. The guard gentleman bowed before returning to his indifferent demeanor. Sui Ling found these things very interesting. She had been sleeping for many years, but now she was even more divided into different levels than before. The more she lived, the more she went back. Help me make an elegant and luxurious hairstyle, and also choose a classical dress, which is more minimalist. Okay, miss. The employees here recognized Sui Ling, but still approached with coquettishness to ask for warmth and comfort, afraid of offending the young lady. No matter how timid, unpopular, and jealous she is rumored to be outside, here she is undoubtedly the eldest lady. Sui Ling watched as the stylist cut off the excess hair step by step, and the casually drawn hair became lazy, admiring her eyes. He is indeed a top stylist, worthy of their praise. A woman is her own appearance, even if she is a deity, this principle is the same. She looked at her elegant and elegant self in front of the mirror, with a pair of clear brown pupils that were shallow. Sui Ling has never been the kind of aggressive and seductive woman, nor is she the kind of lustful and pure little white flower like Shen Qingyue. She has been carrying a dignified and gentle aura since birth, with elegant and indifferent hands and movements. Due to the bloodline of the gods, she always possesses the kind of soothing beauty and tranquility, like the classical and elegant gods in Western mythology. Sui Ling spent a lot of time dressing herself up, which was not idle. She lifted her steps and walked towards the door. Go see a good play. According to the plot provided by the system, after the death of the original protagonist Shen Sui Ling, Shen Qingyue truly became the main female lead in Xuanwen. My left hand was a scumbag, my right hand was a troublemaker, and I also had a romantic relationship. In the end, I inherited the Shen family and achieved both career and love. And this afternoon, Shen's father took Shen Qingyue to the banquet held by the Ji family, which was also the birthplace of her love. Someone drugged the young master of the Ji family, but Shen Qingyue saw through and cleverly countered with a general. Not only did he identify the culprit behind the scenes, but he also gained the favor of Ji Mu, and even the usually cold young master Ji paid attention to her. Just as Sui Ling wanted to go and see a good play happily, an untimely voice rang out. Hint. Hint. The redemption target is in the southwest direction, please go ahead. Sui Ling. Dot. She doesn't want to go. 
1087's voice was particularly cheerful, but when it landed in Suailing's ears, it felt like schadenfreude. She selectively blocked the words spoken by the system and walked forward on her own. Hey hey. The direction is wrong, that's the southwest direction. It's not here. 1087 thought that Sui Ling didn't know the direction, so he personally came out to guide him, completely unaware of Sui Ling's unwillingness. After all, Sui Ling's compassionate appearance on that day left a deep impression on 1087. Sui Ling chuckled twice, particularly gloomy and indifferent, stubbornly walking towards the direction of the mall exit. She slept for tens of thousands of years, finally having such a leisurely time, no one can disturb her. Go see the play. Dot. Sui Ling watched as the golden barrier in front of her separated her from freedom, and her gentle smile gradually grew cold. According to Article 107 of the contract signed between the host of Sui Ling and Mr. 007, the primary goal is always to prioritize the task and the person responsible for redemption, ensuring the smooth progress of the task, why don't I remember the words there is a redeemer, dot. 1087 silently presented the scroll content to Sui Ling and thoughtfully presented a magnifying glass. With the help of a magnifying glass, Sui Ling Kai reluctantly saw a faint image of the characters, vaguely indicating the redeemer. Sui Ling. Dot. You're a scam. Fraud. Sui Ling suddenly laughed, but without any warmth, as she flipped a brooch she had just bought at her fingertips. She squinted her eyes and had a bright smile, but her words made 1087 hug her little wings tightly. Don't let me grab your handle. Is the host of Sui Ling really fierce? With a cold air all over her body, Sui Ling walked quickly towards the southwest direction, eager to complete the task. The man leaned lazily against the wall with dignity, even though blood flowed from his knees, his expression remained unchanged. How dare you run! The fierce person in front of him spat out phlegm fiercely on the ground, then kicked Wen Jingsa with his foot. When Sui Ling arrived, he saw Wen Jingsa firmly hit him, and he let out a painful groan in his throat. It hurt so much. Sui Ling gently stroked her knees and lit a candle for Wen Jingsa in her heart. Stop it. Before the fierce man could strike again, Sui Ling interrupted him with a cold and indifferent voice. Being disturbed by someone, the man frowned in displeasure and turned back fiercely, but as he looked at Sui Ling, his eyes flashed with amazement. Oh, little beauty, are you here to accompany your brother? There are many scars on the man's face, some of which even cross half of his face, looking eerie and terrifying. At this moment, he thinks he is handsome and smiles, which is particularly greasy. Sui Ling thinks she needs water to wash her eyes. She didn't look at the man, but shifted her gaze to Wen Jingsa leaning on the ground. End of this chapter Chapter 4 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 4 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 4 The man's figure was thin but straight, his skin was pale to the point of being somewhat pathological, his fingertips were still stained with blood, and he slowly fell along the clear and visible veins of the veins, blooming a beautiful rose on the ground. He slowly looked up, his eyes lifeless and lifeless, cold and profound like a millennium cold pool, shrouded in mist, spreading hopelessness and indifference. When facing Sui Ling, he gently trembled his curled and thick eyelashes, but still lowered his head in silence. Sui Ling, dot. What does this person mean? I came to save him, but he still looks down on me. Master Sui Ling, stop complaining. Is he going to die? 1087 watched as more and more blood flowed on the ground, and quickly reminded Sui Ling to save people first. If I die, then I'll die. What's it to me? Sui Ling felt uncomfortable and watched coldly. The bodyguard who has been following her is planning to go and beat up that fierce man. Suddenly, the electronic screen flickered in front of Sui Ling, but it was no longer a blue screen and was filled with red alarms. Redemption target has died. System data archive destroyed, restarting small world. 
However, in an instant, Sui Ling returned to the golden barrier that separated her, and she remained silent as she pursed her lips. Sui Ling, dot. Why did you start over with a setback? The goal of the host of Sui Ling is to redeem Wen Jingzi. If it cannot be completed, the dog will bring it back. No longer did Sui Ling think that there was a clear sense of schadenfreude in the voice of 1087. If the host of Sui Ling dies in the later plane due to cold observation, the dog will be brought back to the first plane. Sui Ling, dot. As a last resort, Sui Ling had to run quickly towards the southwest direction and kill him a few more times while she was still in the first position. Upon arriving at the location of Wen Jingzi, Sui Ling directly pushed the fierce man towards the bodyguard, so fast that no one could react. Hold him down. Sui Ling ordered in a deep voice, furrowed her brows, and looked at the man's colorless face, pulling him up and carrying him on her back. Act lightly. He's injured. Sui Ling listened to the worried voice of 1087 and gritted her teeth to answer, I didn't even shout too much. What pain does he feel? With such a big man and his malnourished body, I can carry him well. When Jinxa's scattered consciousness gathered due to pain, and he stared blankly at Sui Ling. His breath was filled with a faint gardenia fragrance, which was very pleasant. Don't sleep. Sui Ling spoke up to remind. Upon hearing these words, Jing Su's eyelids darkened slightly. He reluctantly opened his eyes and stared at Sui Ling, her delicate appearance complemented by her shattered beauty, like an angel descending into the mortal world. 1087, call the Shen family driver and ambulance. I have already done it. 1087 replied proudly, looking childish and proud as I had anticipated. You're amazing. For a long time, Sui Lingkai coldly praised this sentence. 1087, dot. What should I do if I suddenly feel disgusted and ridiculed? Sui Ling watched as when Jinx's breath became increasingly weak, and she gently squinted her eyes. Just hold on for a while, the ambulance is coming soon. Upon hearing these words, Jing Su's lips moved slightly, and Sui Ling leaned down to barely hear a few words. Don't go, there's, causing, trouble. Sui Ling didn't hear clearly whether it was causing trouble or not. She comforted Wen Jingzi by patting her shoulder, her lips curved upwards. It's okay, I'm not afraid of trouble. Wen Jingzi took a deep look at Sui Ling, with no tears of gratitude in his eyes, only a faint guard. He looked for a few seconds before hanging his head, and the pain in his body was almost numbing him. He didn't have the strength to speak anymore, so he had to relax all over and barely let himself faint. When Sui Ling supported Wen Jingzi and felt his breath almost disappearing, Uncle Wang arrived with an ambulance. Hospital Sui Ling sat on a bench and chatted with 1087 expressionlessly throughout the afternoon while listening to Jingzi's rescue efforts. The bodyguards who followed him could only see Sui Ling's cold and distant figure, but he had been patiently waiting. He silently sighed at the lady's kindness to the people in the emergency room. Sui Ling looked at her phone for an hour and asked in a calm voice, 1087. Why hasn't he woken up yet? How could someone recover so quickly from such a serious injury? He has no other wounds besides his leg injury. 1087 listened to Sui Ling's puzzled voice and roared, he's immortal. Losing too much blood can lead to coma and death. Just as Sui Ling was about to refute 1087, the light in the emergency room turned green. The patient is out of danger, just those legs. The doctor remained silent for a while and gently shook his head toward Sui Ling, with a hint of regret in his eyes. What a handsome young man he is, he is likely to rely on a wheelchair to make ends meet in the future. Sui Ling remained silent, lowered her head slightly, gazing at the dried bloodstains on her fingers. She gently touched them, as if there was still the warmth of a man's blood. The doctor thought that Sui Ling's silence was due to excessive sadness. He sighed and comforted her by lightly patting her shoulder, then turned around and left. My task is to prevent Wen Jingzi from blackening out and ensure his personal safety, right? 
Sui Ling suddenly asked 1087 with a faint expression. Yes, it is. 1087 couldn't figure it out, but still answered Sui Ling's question honestly. That's great. Sui Ling's sudden smile made 1087 even more puzzled, and hearing the news of Jinx's broken leg seemed to make Sui Ling's host very happy. It shakes its wings and has a slightly crooked little head, which looks a bit cute. The faint smell of disinfectant permeated the room, and the person on the bed lay quietly, with no blood on their faces, but it did not affect their handsome appearance. Sui Ling stared at the face of the noble demon with a hint of trance. She lightly tapped her wrist, her narrow peach blossom eyes relaxed, and even if she didn't smile, it brought a deep and gentle feeling. When it comes to family background, Wen Jingsa is not considered an honor. His mother is just an artist in the dust who sells her skills but not her body. But the artistic woman also feels tempted. Under the persuasion and gentle attack of her father, she chooses to let go of everything and elope with him. Wen's father was the heir of the flourishing Wen family at that time, and the people of the Wen family could not have allowed him to marry a woman with no background in the world. And Wen's father would not give up his power for a humble woman. So Wen's mother, who was still pregnant, was abandoned like this. Wen's mother, who had lost her virginity and had no job, had no choice but to return to that dusty area. Due to losing her innocence, Wen's mother's value quickly declined, and she could only do some blatant odd jobs to earn tips. Wen Jingsa had a vivid memory and faced his mother's constant tears. He didn't understand and could only extend his tender white hand to comfort her. Later, Wen's father somehow learned about Wen Jingsa's identity and took him back to the Wen family. But Wen's father's purpose was not to compensate Wen Jingsa, but to have his vibrant heart save his true heir. Wen Jingsa's half-brother Wen Jingsa was scolded as a bastard from a young age, and his cold and ruthless personality has been deeply ingrained in his heart. Therefore, he will not be easily tempted by Wen's father's small favors and has long been on guard against them. As expected, when he accidentally heard Wen's father's conversation, he immediately decided to leave. But this departure completely angered Wen's father, who issued a death order to capture Wen Jingsa and force him to undergo surgery. This body full of injuries is Wen's masterpiece. End of this chapter Chapter 5 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 5 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 5 After recalling the information, Sui Ling slowly stood up and looked at the sleeping man in front of her. No wonder I didn't hit my heart. The air was quiet for a long time before I heard Sui Ling's faint emotions. Is it time to summarize this now? Shouldn't we stick, hug, and soothe his young soul? As soon as Sui Ling left the ward, she saw Uncle Wang holding a thick stack of paper and breathed a sigh of relief when she saw her come out. Miss, medical expenses. Dot. Forget about this. Sui Ling looked at the string of zeros after the huge amount of money, and her footsteps almost stumbled. Stay calm and don't panic. Find my parents. Sui Ling calmly dumped the huge expenses on Shen's father and mother. The original owner had no money, let alone her. Okay, miss. Uncle Wang knew that Sui Ling couldn't have money, so he stopped talking. Remember to remind me when he wakes up. Sui Ling changed off her blood-stained clothes and chose a simple and elegant style. The pure white dress hung down to her ankles, revealing a touch of whiteness. She raised her eyes slightly, her voice clear and smooth. Yes. The bodyguard stood outside the door, standing at a height of 1.9 meters, particularly imposing. Sui Ling placed the high-set dress with blood in a prominent position, which Wen Jingsa could see as soon as she woke up. She asked Uncle Wang to escort her back to the Shen family. Looking at the sky, it was already dusk, and I thought all the medicine from the Ji family had already been dispensed. Sui Ling kicked the stone under her feet uninterested, but her interest was not high. 
Only when Uncle Wang drove the car up to Suiling did she step onto the car, gentle and dignified, with a noble temperament that had been ingrained in her bones. After Wang Shichuo finished driving, he looked at the beautiful-looking Suiling in the car mirror and felt that this newly arrived young lady was different from before. In the past, she was timid and her voice when talking to others was too weak to be heard clearly. Although she had a pair of agile eyes, she often hid under her thick eyes and bangs. Nowadays, young ladies have a confident and bold temperament, but they are not domineering. Their curved eyes and shallow smiles always carry a warm and cold temperament. Especially seeing her holding a man covered in blood, even someone like him who has lived for forty or fifty years feels a bit shocked. Unfortunately, the young lady's expression was indifferent, and the bloodstains in her eyes couldn't withstand any waves. Her voice was calm and composed, arranging everything. Swailing noticed Uncle Wang's gaze, as if she had seen through his thoughts. There was no emotion in her eyes, and she looked at him without hesitation. Uncle Wang couldn't help but avert his gaze after two glances. His eyes were clear and agile, shining like stars. They were originally innocent and harmless, but they also led people into the gentle and soft dream she had woven, exuding evil energy. Sui Ling propped up her face and casually looked out the window, occasionally raising her hand to glance at her phone and typing a few words to send. Returning to the Shen family, Sui Ling immediately returned to her room and locked the door with her back hand. 1087, do you have any quick ways to get money? Sui Lingsheng had no choice but to lean against the computer chair, her slender legs resting on the small stool under the table. According to the attitude of Shen's father and mother toward Shen Qinyue, she cannot guarantee that she will not be kicked out by the Shen family in the future. Wow! The sound of 1087 is particularly cheerful, robbing banks, tomb raids, and museums are all quick ways to get money, Sui Ling, dot. This proposal is very feasible. Not only did it win the special silver bracelet, but it also included food and clothing. Knowing the unreliability of 1087, Sui Ling didn't expect it much either. She picked up the fruit knife from her desk and casually flipped it back and forth. 1087 looked at Sui Ling with a pensive expression, feeling a bit cold in his heart. No way. The host of Sui Ling wouldn't really want to take its opinion, would it? It's just a play naughty. 1087 hugged his little wings and felt remorse for his behavior. That. Hmm. Sui Ling inserted a fruit knife into the apple brought by the nanny, raising her head slightly, as if patiently listening. The host of Sui Ling, who obediently listens to me, is also very scary. I can. I can tell you the winning number for the next round of the lottery. But. Just this once. It's considered a beginner's benefit. 1087 clenched his wings and looked conflicted. Mr. 007 has warned it not to meddle in things on the plane casually, and when it does so. It should not have interfered, right? Oh. Sui Ling raised her eyebrows in surprise. She didn't expect 1087 at all, but it seems like it's trying to catch up on something. Listening to the numbers reported by the system, Sui Ling gladly accepted the money she received for free, not for nothing. Just as Sui Ling was closing her eyes and recuperating, a hurried knocking on the door rang out. Shen Sui Ling, open the door. Listening to the familiar voice of a woman, Sui Ling raised her eyes and casually put on her shoes to open the door. Mother. Sui Ling curved a flawless smile, her narrow eyes filled with elegant light. Shen's mother looked at her daughter, whom she had not seen in eighteen years, with this polite and courteous appearance, and her originally angry emotions had to be suppressed at this moment. Why did you spend so much money? Shen's mother tried her best to communicate calmly with her peers. Even if she choked her throat in one breath, she couldn't let Shen Sui Ling spend it casually. But she never expected that a child from the countryside would spend money so recklessly. Can't I spend it? Sui Ling curved her eyes and smiled, calmly and calmly asking. Shen's mother said, It's not that you can't spend money, but you should be frugal. 
Chinyue's sister's one dress is the price of my ten dresses. Sui Ling pinched her wrist bone with her fingers, her tone somewhat melancholic, lazily leaning against the door frame, slightly lowering her head. When is the clear moon? When is there such an expensive dress? Shen's mother had not finished speaking yet, as if she suddenly remembered something, and the smile on her lips froze. Sui Ling lowered her head silently, looking uncomfortable in Shen's mother's eyes. But in places she couldn't see, her smile was somewhat mocking and scattered. Most likely, 1087 sent all the character information related to the mission to Sui Ling. So they stood naked in front of Sui Ling like being dissected. Before Li Sui Ling returned to the Shen family, Shen Qingyue's coming of age ceremony invited guests from Shen's father. In order to fulfill Shen's mother's wish, he held his daughter as the pearl in his palm. When Shen Qingyue stood in front of everyone wearing a fishtail skirt worth 70 million yuan, it was no surprise that it caused the crowd's amazement and envy. But at that time, Li Sui Ling was alone and bought two candies in the store, one as a birthday cake and one as a birthday gift, all for just one yuan. Isn't it because of your sister's birthday? Shen's mother clearly favors Shen Qingyue more. One is a cowardly child without any advantages, and the other is a confident and kind dot hearted young lady. Even if there is a blood relationship, what is right and what is wrong is clear at a glance. Shen's mother knew very well that only Shen Qingyue could truly bring her face and benefits. Sui Ling didn't hesitate to tell Shen Mu how the original owner celebrated their 18th birthday, and also mentioned many previous glares and mockery. Shen's mother, who has been pampered since childhood, has never suffered in her life. In her previous life, she was favored by her parents, and in her next life, she was favored by Shen's father. Suddenly hearing this kind of thing, she looked surprised and her beautiful face with some traces of time was a bit stunned. Sui Ling remained silent, and Shen's mother remained silent. The silence in the air was thick and oppressive. I, I have something else to do. Shen's mother has been innocent all her life. Apart from being a bit coquettish and saving face, she treats strangers very kindly in her heart, let alone her own daughter. She almost fled in despair, and her long and beautiful life made her think that the world was bright and gentle. However, these fantasies were punctured by swaling like a foam. Dinner was still brought by the maid as usual, and no one called Sui Ling downstairs. She was happy to be at ease. End of this chapter Chapter 6 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 6 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 6 Early in the morning, Sui Ling was dragged up and dressed up. Her eyes were bleary and she was a bit unclear. It wasn't until she sat in the car in a daze that she realized she needed to report to the university today. Shen Qingyue sat next to Sui Ling with a book in her hand, her eyes slightly curved, pure and refined. Her voice is delicate and gentle, particularly protective. Good morning, sister. The smile on Shen Qingyue's lips didn't stop, and her eyes were full of provocation and contempt, which didn't match her soft voice. Sui Ling glanced at her with a slanted gaze, not angry, and her face was calm and indifferent. You shouldn't have come back, you shouldn't have fought with me. Through the baffle, no one knew what would happen in the car, so Shen Qingyue's madness became even more intense in her eyes. She stared fixedly at Sui Ling, warning her as usual. Dot. Sui Ling pursed her lips, frowned slightly, and silently opened her phone to take a photo of Shen Qingyue. You're very noisy. Sui Ling's tone was indifferent, swaying the interface of the university forum in front of Shen Qingyue. Shen Qingyue. Shen Qingyue's face changed from crazy to stunned, and then turned slightly pale. She worked hard to maintain her delicate character in school for a year, never allowing anyone to see her crazy appearance just now. Shen Qingyue watched as Sui Ling turned her face outside the window again, holding on to her floral skirt with her fingers, feeling a bit regretful in her heart. How could she have thought that the slut who had let her bully before suddenly took a twisted and crazy photo of her? 
If such photos were to be spread, although she wouldn't hurt her foundation, she would inevitably have a lot of gossip. The more she thought about it, the more vicious Shen Qingyue's gaze towards Sui Ling became finally, the noisy voice disappeared from Sui Ling's ears, and she squinted her eyes with joy, like a noble and elegant Persian cat. At the school gate, Sui Ling looked around with interest. She had been sleeping for thousands of years, and her memories of the academy were already blurred. At this moment, as she looked at the powerful A characters, she sincerely sighed in her heart. Truly magnificent, truly worthy of your school. Shen Qinyue saw the slight ripples in Sui Ling's eyes and felt even more disdainful. A rural bumpkin still wanted to compete with her for the Shen family. As if thinking of something, she quickly left Sui Ling far away, looking unfamiliar, with no intention of telling everyone that Sui Ling was a miss of the Shen family. Qinyue, are you here? A mediocre-looking girl saw Shen Qinyue and her eyes lit up. She quickly summoned everyone to greet her. Shen Qinyue felt greatly satisfied with her vanity as she looked at the girl in front of her with a low and seductive expression. With delicate steps, we talked softly to her, and the stars cheered the moon. Sui Ling stared at Shen Qinyue's intact legs and silently blinked. Didn't the original owner push her to the bottom of the building? No injuries at all, it's really unprofessional. Sui Ling could not stop roast in her heart. With only a few glances, her thoughts had already flown nine days away. Li Sui Ling The sound of a young boy jumping out of the sunlight rang out, and Sui Ling's eyes naturally turned to the boy in the distance. The young master has been waiting for you for a long time. Ji Xiaowen, with a tone of complaint, kicked the stone in front of him. Sui Ling looked at the young man with silver-yellow hair in front of her, searching for memories in her mind and thinking about how to deal with him. Ji Xiaowen was obviously accustomed to Sui Ling's silence and didn't care if she answered. He started talking on his own. According to the original owner's memory, Ji Xiaowen and she were high school classmates. Because he couldn't bear the gloomy personality of the original owner and adhered to the principle of a righteous young man to influence the world, Ji Xiaowen often came to chat with the original owner. I hope to make her personality more open and optimistic. The original owner stayed away from Ji Xiaowen a few times but the effect was minimal, so he gradually gave up and let him chatter in his ear. The youth's grades are just as impressive as this person's, and like the original owner, they advance to a university through their strength. Li Sui Ling, you're getting more and more perfunctory. Before, you would at least respond twice. Ji Xiaowen looked at Sui Ling with a mournful gaze, looking extremely sad. I am indeed not just enough to influence you. Hmm. Sui Ling only heard the previous sentence and pretended to answer in response to the young man. But the word, um, coincidentally matched the boy's next sentence. Sui Ling. Dot. I'm afraid the air will suddenly become silent. Ji Xiaowen was stunned for a second or two, and then his expression became even more sorrowful, as if a large black cloud had formed over his head. Sui Ling. She really didn't mean it. Ji Xiaowen watched as Sui Ling continued to stare at him expressionlessly, with a somewhat unbearable expression of pain. You are such a cold person. Ji Xiaowen shook his bold and unrestrained hair, although his mouth complained, he didn't mind Sui Ling's attitude, and his smile became bright and dazzling again. I went to report. After reaching her destination, Sui Ling looked at the young man with a cold voice. Mmm, hurry up and go. I have something else to do. Ji Xiaowen may have been a bit anxious, holding his phone and nodding around. Upon hearing these words, he looked up at Sui Ling and nodded casually. I'll leave first, young master. Come back to me if you need anything. The original owner majored in history and did not have any other miscellaneous majors. Sui Ling did not live on campus and had nothing to do after reporting. Sui Ling is very willing to leisurely stroll around the campus of a university. Due to poor interpersonal relationships and personality issues, the original owner spends years in the library and is unwilling to go out and walk around. 
There is a hundred-year-old ginkgo tree in Ida, which is fashionable as spring, like a green fan with lush leaves swaying in the wind. Sui Ling casually picked up half-withered ginkgo leaves on the ground, interweaving yellow and green to create a splendid and romantic picture. Just as Sui Ling was enjoying this hard-won peaceful and natural moment, a mocking voice suddenly sounded. Tubozi is Tubozi, I haven't even seen a tree. Sui Ling gave the talking girl a indifferent glance, then turned her gaze back to the lush leaves, showing a look of neglect. You. The girl was ignored and felt even more depressed. Even if she couldn't compare to Shinchinua, even a bumpkin from the countryside dared to see her as worthless. The girl stepped forward and directly knocked down the ginkgo tree in Sui Ling's hand, with an unfriendly expression in her eyes. Sui Ling watched with her own eyes as the splendid ginkgo trees fell to the ground in the wind and were cruelly stomped on by someone. Her indifferent gaze gradually cooled, deep and cold like a cold pool for thousands of years. Miss, please pick it up and return it to me. Sui Ling kept looking at the ginkgo under the girl's feet, her voice cold but still polite. Shu. The girl looked down upon Sui Ling and exerted a fierce force under her feet, leaving some leaf juice on the ground. Sui Ling stood silently for a while, rubbing her fingertips against her bones, scanning the girl before turning and leaving. The girl thought that Sui Ling was afraid, and the smile on her lips was even stronger. She didn't want to let her go and walked with Sui Ling. She dare not bully Shin Qinyue, but she will not dare to bully Shin Sui Ling. She also has a background and family background, only slightly inferior to the Shin family. The Shin family cannot go against their own family just for the sake of such a daughter. The girl's eyes were fierce, and she kept following Sui Ling as she gradually started running. She wants to retrieve all the anger that Shin Qinyue has caused her from Shin Sui Ling. End of this chapter Chapter 7 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 7 you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 7 After running a distance, Sui Ling slowly stopped, her steps slow and elegant. She stood at the entrance of a narrow alley, turned around in a noble manner, surrounded by buildings and trees blocking the sunlight. She hid in the darkness, her expression blurry. This is the surveillance blind spot that 1087 found for her, and hitting someone is just right. Sui Ling silently retreated, stroking her wrist bone with her fingers and lightly tapping it. With a gentle smile, she looked at the girl getting closer and closer. Before the girl could speak, Sui Ling grabbed her wrist and almost instantly, intense pain spread throughout her body from her arm. She wanted to shout out in pain, but was stopped by Sui Ling using her clothes. She looked up at the girl standing against the light, her eyes filled with fear. Sui Ling no longer has that kind and polite appearance, with cold eyes, expressionless face, and an inexplicably fierce demeanor. I'm not a good person, don't provoke me. A cold and emotionless voice rang in the girl's ear, and she quickly nodded due to fear and pain. Did Shen Qinyue ask you to come? Sui Ling gazed at the fallen girl and slowly squatted down, the silver pin on her chest reflecting a cold light. The girl hesitated for a moment in her eyes, then quickly nodded. Sui Ling pulled out a knife from somewhere, and the cold blade pressed against the girl's neck. To be honest. The girl looked at the coldness in Sui Ling's eyes and knew that if she said a wrong word, Sui Ling's knife would not hesitate to stab her body. I can't stand Shin Qinyue, so I want to bully her sister. The knife in Sui Ling's hand flipped back at her fingertips, frightening the girl to dodge backwards. I don't know if that sentence made Sui Ling happy, but her eyes curved and the chill on her body dissipated. Do you? Can't stand Shin Qinyue. The girl didn't understand what Sui Ling was laughing about, and her eyebrows furrowed due to entanglement. Sui Ling didn't hear the girl's answer for a while, feeling a bit impatient. The folded blade once again pressed against the girl's neck. Yes. I can't stand her. Trembling with fear from the cold, the girl shouted out as if facing death. That's great. 
Sui Ling murmured softly, but the girl didn't hear her. After being helped up by Sui Ling, the girl only realized later that she had been treated gently by the girl who had just pointed a knife at her. It's a bit painful, please hold on a bit. Sui Ling's voice is no longer cold, but has returned to a warm and elegant voice. During the girl's days, Sui Ling grabbed her dislocated wrist and twisted it fiercely, restoring the displaced bone. The girl let out a painful cry, but before she could speak, she was once again covered by Sui Ling, her movements still rough. Adhering to the principle that the enemy of the enemy is a friend, Sui Ling now looks particularly pleasing to this girl. I have a bad relationship with Shen Qingyue. When the girl was lifted up by Sui Ling, she heard this sentence. Shen Qingyue said that your sisters have a good relationship. The girl chuckled twice and patted her dusty clothes. If the relationship is good, everyone will know that I am her sister now. Sui Ling vaguely remembered that the young lady in front of her was also from an extraordinary family background, which was why she was invited by Shen's father to know her identity as a young lady from the Shen family. The girl frowned and thought carefully for a while. Shen Qingyue did only say that her relationship with her sister was very close, but she never said that Sui Ling was her sister. She was preconceived. Even this is fake, what else is true about Shen Qingyue? The girl regained her disdainful and mocking expression. She paused for a moment and randomly and unnaturally said, I'm sorry, to Sui Ling. She couldn't stand Shen Qingyue, hated and wanted to torture and destroy everything around her, but she wouldn't harm others for no reason. Sui Ling raised her eyebrows somewhat unexpectedly, with a smile filling the corners of her mouth, bewitching people. I am willing to accompany you regarding matters related to Shen Qingyue. Sui Ling saw the message on her phone and waved at the girl, leaving only one sentence. Miss, he's awake the bodyguard sent a message, and Sui Ling replied by pressing her phone. She blocked the incessant urging of 1087 in her mind and slowly walked out of the school gate, calling for a taxi. Hospital when Jingzi was supported by someone and leaned against the bedside, with a cold and indifferent gaze, exuding a sense of stillness. His legs were numb from being drugged, and he stared at the slender legs with a dull and unclear gaze. Hello miss. With the respectful welcome of the bodyguard, the door was pushed open. When Jingzi's gaze became focused, but his expression remained expressionless and his temperament was cold and scattered. Sui Ling saw this scene as soon as she entered the door, lightly licked her lower lip, and her gaze fell on the clothes on the chair. It's the one she wore when she first saw Wen Jingzi. The simple and elegant clothes were stained with blood, and the bloodstains had dried up, turning brown. She lifted her hand to pick up the clothes and casually threw them to the bodyguard behind her. Lost. Yes. The bodyguard went out with clothes, leaving only Sui Ling and Wen Jingzi in the room. Neither of them spoke, and Sui Ling leaned back in a chair with a lazy posture. I saved you, don't you intend to repay me? Sui Ling was the first to break the silence, looking at Wen Jingzi with a smile in her eyes. Her narrow peach blossom eyes were deep and gentle. Wen Jingzi remained silent, his lips pursed in a straight line, devoid of any blood. Sui Ling didn't hear an answer and raised her eyebrows lightly. This person doesn't know how to repay kindness, does he? She is now so poor that she is dying. She gave him all the 1087 lottery money to treat his leg, but this person didn't even show any concern. Your hospitalization expenses are so expensive, don't you treat me like a cow? Can't you justify not repaying me? As Sui Ling spoke, she had to change her voice amidst the screams of 1087. She worked hard to save him and raise him, asking him to be a cow and a horse for herself. Dot. When Jinx's fingers curled up, and his voice became somewhat hoarse due to not speaking for a long time. I'm not worth saving. I have nothing. Sui Ling was depressed that her money had not been spent on her. She could not stop roast. You see, he even said he wouldn't let me save him. 1087, dot. He won't let you save you, won't he? You're a taskmaster. Isn't that why you're here? 
Sui Ling retorted. Isn't your 007 just for me to counterattack? You are a fraud. Can we stop mentioning fraud? Mr. 007, doing this is called strategy. I don't care, I don't care, you have to save him, love him, take care of him. 1087 rolls around in the system space, and the childlike voice is full of unreasonable teasing. Dot. Sueling's expressionless face blocked 1087 and refocused her gaze on Wenjingsa. Forget it, as long as you're alive. At 1087, Sueling could only dispel the idea of having Wenjingsa become a cow and a horse for her. His eyes leaned back with a faint expression, his tone casual, but the words he said made Wenjingsa's body slightly stiff. You won't get anything from me. Wenjingsa repeated that he had no use for anything his pale and handsome face carrying a hint of alienation. Didn't I say that? As long as you're alive. Sui Ling's phone rang, she picked it up and glanced at it. She typed a few words and then put it aside. Upon hearing this sentence, Sui Ling's expression was indifferent, and the corner of her mouth slightly curved in response. Sui Ling really doesn't matter. Saving him is to complete the task, nothing else. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. The Return of a Thousand Golds, 8. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8. The Return of a Thousand Golds, 8. Do you want revenge? Upon hearing Sui Ling's words, Jing Su fell into silence, with an icy and cold appearance that he didn't know if he believed it or not. Suddenly hearing Sui Ling's words, he was stunned for a moment. Revenge. What does he take for revenge? Sui Ling expected that she would not receive an answer, so she picked up the document sent by the bodyguard and handed it to Wen Jingsa. Once you've figured it out, sign it. If you have anything to do, ask Wang Yi. Wang Yi is the bodyguard leader brought in by Sui Ling, and has been guarding outside the door of Wen Jingsa these days. Sui Ling walked slowly as she prepared to leave. Wen Jingsa said, are you leaving now? Sui Ling looked at Wen Jingsa with a puzzled expression on her face. She's very busy. If she doesn't leave now, when will she leave? 1087 once again felt heartbroken in the system space. He is now a patient, shouldn't we give him a loving companion? Sui Ling pursed her lips. Her task is not just to protect Wen Jingsa, why care about his feelings? 1087 looked sorrowful. He has no one to rely on now. If he commits suicide due to depression, we will have to start over again. Sui Ling, dot. That's really good. There's no reason to refute it. Sui Ling took a step back and pulled Wen Jingsa down with a serious expression, letting him lie in bed. Sui Ling twisted the blanket for Wen Jingsa, patted him like a child, and said seriously, sleep. Good sleep promotes a happy mood. Wen Jingsa said, dot. It was noon and he had just woken up. How did he sleep? Sui Ling sat by the bed, not idle, and her voice was clear as she recited fairy tales. The girl's sound quality is very pleasant, warm and light, especially reassuring. Sui Ling was about to finish reading a story when she found that Wen Jingsa was still staring at her with big eyes open. She changed her expression and tampered with the ending expressionlessly. Finally, the big bad wolf killed the hunter and swallowed Little Red Riding Hood's family. Wen Jingsa. How does he remember that the ending of the story wasn't like this? Sui Ling saw and heard Jingsa not falling asleep, thinking that her storytelling skills were not good enough and her sense of achievement was not satisfied. Her voice naturally became a bit fierce. Go to bed quickly. Dot. When Jingsa closed his eyes helplessly. It was not that he didn't give face. He had been sleeping for a day and a half, and it was true that he couldn't sleep. Sui Ling looked at Wen Jingsa's obedient appearance and nodded in satisfaction. She leaned back on the chair and pressed her phone for a while, but there was no sound. After a long time, Sui Ling didn't even hear Jingsa open her eyes. She slowly stood up and approached Jingsa, 
as if confirming whether he was asleep. The gentle breathing made Sui Ling curl her eyes and walk out of the room with her phone in hand. Your way of accompanying someone is to make them fall asleep and then sneak away, right? Is there any problem? It's already good that I didn't leave in front of him. It's already great that the host of Sui Ling can do this. I will definitely do better in the future. 1087 suppressed his roar and silently comforted himself. He is a polite system and does not argue with others. After Swaling left, the man who had originally closed his eyes slowly opened them. Upon hearing Jinxa curl up her hand, there seemed to be a faint scent of gardenia in her breath. The fragrance emanating from her body. He picked up the document that Swaling had placed aside and flipped through it. It is a core technology transfer agreement for electronic technology, as well as a series of employee interview documents. When Jingsa flipped through it several times and didn't write anything about the places where he needed to invest and pay. However, the core and most profitable technology rights were to be transferred to him. Upon hearing Jingsa, he frowned in confusion. Is this going to start a company for him? When Jingsa carefully rubbed the paper of the document without signing it. He was with his mother when he was a child, and even though he never went to school, he often read many books, most of which were science popularization picture books bought by his mother for him. Later on, as I grew up, when Jingsa went to the library to borrow it himself. He reads all kinds of books, occasionally some that he doesn't understand at all, but it doesn't stop him from finishing them. If you don't understand, remember the content before reading the next book. The connection between knowledge can help him understand many things he didn't understand before after reading a book. When Jingsa has had a great talent for understanding electronic technology since childhood, but he has never told anyone about it. The pen spun around the man's fair and slender fingertips, and finally stopped at the title of the document, Electronic Core Technology Transfer Agreement. Is this a coincidence or an intention? When Jingsa doesn't know. He lowered his eyes, his expression dim and unclear, and his legs began to experience severe pain due to ineffective anesthesia. What is it worth her doing? When Jingsa sat quietly for a long time without signing, and finally silently put the document back under his pillow. A university is very relaxed for students, as long as there are no classes, they can do whatever they want. Sui Ling was too lazy to go to the campus anymore and got up to return to the Shen family. The Shen family has been empty for a long time during the day, with Shen's father and mother in the company and Shen Qingyue at school. Sui Ling was very happy to stay alone. She returned to her room, opened her computer, and looked at the dense code, which was dazzling with 1087. Didn't you sleep for thousands of years? How do you understand these things? Geniuses learn things quickly. Sui Lingmu answered with a straight face, her fair and slender fingers typing on the keyboard, her movements so skillful that she didn't seem like a beginner at all. Do you believe me? 1087 didn't continue to ask, and the host of Sui Ling didn't want to say it. No matter how much it asked, it was useless. Ding Sui Ling glanced at the message sent by her phone and lightly tapped the desktop. Miss L, I am very interested in your proposal. May I have the opportunity to meet and discuss it, sure, tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. Sui Ling pressed the send button, and a smile appeared in her eyes. She's going to have money. 1087 glanced at Sui Ling's note to that person. Top zero money making tools. Very good. It's very simple and rough. Just as Sui Ling finished typing the last letter, a polite knock on the door rang out. Sui Ling opened the door and looked at the elegant man with a wooden face smiling outside the door. Miss, the master invites you to the company for a chat. Sui Ling has seen this person, who has been following Shen's father all year round and is skilled in his methods. Shen's father almost handed over everything, big and small, to him, which shows his trust. Let's go. Sueling's hands were in her pockets, her expression remained unchanged, and her temperament was ethereal and composed. 
Upon arriving at the company, Sui Ling looked up at the towering buildings with an indifferent and distant gaze, and lightly tapped her wrist bone. The young man ahead continued to move forward, and Sui Ling followed slowly with lowered eyes, not knowing what was on her mind. Shen Fu is sitting in front of a French window with a wide view, overlooking the whole Jiangcheng. Father. Sui Ling politely shouted out. Here we go. Shen's father remained silent for a long time before answering Sui Ling, waving to her and gesturing for her to come over. Sui Ling walked over obediently and also grabbed a chair, sitting next to Shen Fu. Oh, you're quite casual. Shen Fu looked at Sui Ling's familiar appearance and smiled, unable to distinguish his true feelings. Do you know who you saved? I know, people from Wen's family. Sui Ling's voice was casual, with a slow and careless appearance. I know you saved me. Shen's voice suddenly turned cold, and his eagle eyes were sharp and serious. End of this chapter Chapter 9 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 9 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 9 But my father helped me pay, didn't he? Sui Ling smiled in her eyes, her slender and slender legs overlapping, elegant and noble. Shen's father remained silent and looked at Sui Ling with those inexplicable and fierce eyes, as if intimidating. Shen's father has been wandering around shopping malls all year round, carrying some degree of authority and a serious and stern appearance that is frightening. Father, these eyes are really beautiful. Sui Ling still had a gentle appearance, and if she praised her, she would open her mouth without caring whether it was true or not. Dot. You're not her. When Shen Fu said this, he was very confident and couldn't take his eyes off Sui Ling. I am her, but not the one in your eyes. Sui Ling smoothed out the wrinkles on her body with a calm tone. She didn't think about pretending at first, and it seemed normal to her. Shen's father stood up, grabbed Sui Ling's arm, rolled up his sleeve, and a scar that crossed his arm was shocking. That was when the original owner worked as a child and was hit by a nail on the barrel. The wound at that time was deep and bone was visible. No one would even have scars on their appearance. Shin's father frowned, his heart must have been a bit shaken. But such an elegant and atmospheric woman doesn't look like the little girl who just came to the Shin family. Is she pretending? What is her purpose? Shin's father scanned the young girl in front of him, a chilling chill spreading from behind to his whole body, making people feel uneasy. If there are no classes in the future, you can come and intern at the company with Qinyue. Don't do it. As soon as Sui Ling heard this, she became unhappy. She was lazy and didn't come here to work hard for Shin father. Host Sui Ling, do you remember what our mission was? The beautiful and kind dot hearted 1087 emerged with a fake smile, but his joyful voice carried a hint of helplessness. Counterattack, protect rookies. Dot. Sainyao, what is this name? Does Wen Jingsen know you call him that? Since we are going to launch a counterattack, we must definitely go to the Shen family and reclaim everything from Shen Qingyue's hands. Shen, if she wants it, just give it to her. I don't care. Sui Ling's face was full of indifference, and she casually answered 1087. I care. 1087 fell silent twice, unable to bear it any more and roared out, once again heartbroken. Dot. Sui Ling pursed her bright lips and, under the pressure of 1087, reluctantly said to Shen's father, You can come, I only come to the company once a week. Shen Fu. Dot. It's like I'm begging you to do something. Shen Fu nodded in agreement, but he wanted to see what capital this little girl had to be proud of. Shen's father was used to being cold-blooded throughout his life. Apart from the shopping mall, he was also Shen's mother. He only treated his children as heirs to the Shen family and did not take on the role of a father. Since he admires this other daughter, why not spend some more energy nurturing her? Shen doesn't need to be artificial, a weak and incompetent young lady, regardless of whether she has a blood relationship or not. 
Shen's father is happy to see his two daughters arguing, which can bring profits to the company and also select the most suitable person for Shen's CEO, achieving the best of both worlds. Until Sui Ling left, Su Li, who had been waiting outside, pushed down his golden-rimmed glasses and walked in. Sir, will the person saved by Miss Shen continue to receive treatment? Shen Fu glanced at his confidant who had been following him all along and rubbed his brow. Pay the money first, that kid from the Wen family may be able to give the Wen family a hard blow at a critical moment. Yes, Sui Ling returned home and fell asleep, full of salty fish aura. 1087 discovered that her host doesn't like to do other things, but she can sleep for a day and a night just by sleeping. As a never-resting hyperactive system, does sleep really bring happiness? Isn't it a waste of time? Sui Ling had classes in the morning of a university, and had no choice but to take a bus with Shen Qinyue to school again. Perhaps due to the abnormal operation of Sui Ling last time, Shen Qinyue appeared particularly quiet. Sui Ling is very satisfied with her current state, and indeed, some people just need to strike to be normal. The history department teachers at a university give witty and humorous lectures, and can also bring some unofficial history that most people are unaware of. Sui Ling didn't find it boring to listen, holding a pen seriously. It seemed like she was taking notes, but in reality, the notebook didn't say a word. It was like listening to a story. Sometimes when I hear something interesting, I will seriously discuss it with 1087. 1087 looked at Sui Ling's cold and distant appearance and exclaimed, a person cannot be judged by their appearance. After finishing history, Sui Ling slowly rushed to the Department of Geography. I thought I could finish this class as a story again, but the geography professor is rigid and strict, and his speech is precise, making it difficult for him to sit still in his class. Compared to the previous history class, Sui Ling remained silent and sat in the last row, unable to hear a word. Can she change her major? Sui Ling, expressionless, complained to 1087 Roast. Not possible. Why? Our mission is to make a comeback and become the ceiling of the business world, rather than learning from the gods, if the host of Sui Ling wants to switch to a finance major, 1087 would be happy to see it. Sui Ling looked at the geography with pictures from all over the world in front of her and sternly refused 1087. I think it's pretty good now. Finally, after class, Sui Ling almost got up and left. She wants to escape the classroom. There are no classes in the afternoon, so Sui Ling can leave the school now. She picked up her phone and glanced at the time. It's after 11 o'clock. Go eat. Sui Ling stood on the roadside with a cup of milk tea in her hand, her outstanding appearance and warm temperament, which made people turn back frequently. Damn it! The little sister over there is so beautiful. The appearance of the cold and beautiful woman drinking milk tea is amazing. The contrast is cute. Sui Ling noticed that someone was constantly looking at her, deliberately standing straight and standing tall. Why are they all looking at me? Look at the monkey. Dot. Refuse to speak to 1087. A student from a university noticed that Sui Ling looked a bit familiar, as if it was their school. They quietly took a photo of Sui Ling and posted it on the university forum. Shocked. Shen Qingyue's position as the school flower is on the brink of danger, and the scene of a cold girl holding milk tea is simply adorable to me although the title is a bit off topic, many people are very interested in mentioning beauties that can rival Shen Qingyue. The picture of Sui Ling quickly caught fire in A, but the person involved at this time was not aware of it. Sui Ling saw the car she had called coming, quickly got into the car, and then relaxed and lay back, completely without the upright posture she had just shown. Sure enough, Salted fish is more suitable for me. Sui Lingsu's main goal is to be positive and upward. Our life goal is to counterattack. 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 Become the ceiling of the world. The slogan 1087 shouted very optimistically, neatly and uniformly, even it itself was moved, fluttering its wings and flying happily. Dot. 
Just be happy. Sui Ling arrived at the agreed location at 57 minutes. She blinked and silently waited until 59 before stepping into the coffee shop. When Sui Ling sat down and the man facing her raised his wrist to look at the watch, the pointer pointed exactly at 1 o'clock. Very punctual, Miss Shen. Thank you. Sui Ling has curved eyes, a gentle yet distant smile, but her gentle temperament gives people a sense of closeness. We are very interested in Miss Shen's website and hope you can consider it. The man pushed off his gold-rimmed glasses with a respectful and polite attitude. Your G group is very different from the one family, isn't it? Sui Ling put the sugar cubes into the coffee and stirred them carefully. Without answering the man's question, she suddenly asked. The man was stunned for a moment, then quickly reacted and said gently, yes. It is well known in the business world that the Ji family has been at odds with the Wen family for generations, so there is no need for men to hide it. That's enough. Sui Ling was very pleased to hear this sentence and signed without discussing any price. With Miss Shen's help, the Ji family will not disappoint you. The man seemed to know something and habitually lifted his glasses, speaking words that satisfied Sui Ling very much. Expectations End of this chapter Chapter 10 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 10 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 The Return of a Thousand Golds, 10 After finishing her conversation, Sui Ling slowly walked to the hospital where Wen Jingsa was located. The man was wearing sick clothes and sitting on the bed with a book in his hand. His pale and handsome face had no expression on his face. With clear muscles, he stroked the paper page and gently tapped, his movements elegant and gentle. Upon hearing the familiar young lady's voice, Wen Jingsa looked up and met her warm and indifferent eyes. What am I doing? Reading. Sui Ling still moved a chair and sat by the bed, her eyes scanning the book in Wen Jingsa's hand, her lips slightly curved. Wen Jingsa looked at the girl in front of him staring at him motionless, feeling a bit uneasy. He clenched his fingers tightly and then released them. What are you doing here? Feeling uncertain in his heart, he pursed his lips upon hearing Jingsa and asked. Can't I come if I have nothing to do with the money I paid? Sui Ling probably felt uncomfortable sitting straight, so she casually leaned back on the chair when there were no outsiders, raising her eyebrows and speaking in a natural tone. Dot. When Jingsa indeed had no reason to inquire about Sui Ling's purpose, and under her dazzling gaze, he was not in the mood to continue reading. Folding the book and placing it by the bedside, as if thinking of something, he took out the contract under his pillow. Are you taking care of me? When Jingsa suddenly approached Sui Ling, with a smile on his face. The warm sunlight slanted through the window, making his eyebrows and eyes clear and elegant. Sui Ling barely suppressed the action of forcefully pushing Wen Jingsa away amidst the screams of 1087. His eyes blinked extremely slowly, silently pushing the bench back half a meter. He didn't hurt his brain either, why is it broken? Upon hearing Jingsa's unexpected movements, Sui Ling was somewhat stunned. She wasn't interested in her own face. Sui Ling stood up with a serious expression, standing against the light, blocking most of the sunlight and standing in front of Wen Jingsa, feeling inexplicably oppressive. Sign quickly. His tone was slightly cold, as if he was a bit angry. Wen Jingsa held a pen and unconsciously signed his name. After signing, he frowned. Why did he listen to her? Sui Ling picked up the signed contract and walked out, not as slowly as before. She walked very fast, as if there were ghosts chasing after her. City people are really scary. They often take care of themselves, they are so thirsty. I need someone to take care of him, where's the wallet to keep him? Sueling's face was expressionless and complained to 1087 Roast. 1087 is decadent and shrunk in the system space, unwilling to pay attention to Sueling. Sueling wandered around in disbelief all the way, only to realize something when she walked out of the hospital and silently returned. Wang Yi. 
The head of the bodyguard standing at the door heard his name and turned his head to see Sui Ling. He quickly walked over. Let's come out and talk about it. Sui Ling quickly abandoned Wen Jinx's actions, and now she has more important things to do. She also wants to be taken care of. Listening to Sui Ling's inner words 1087. Dot. Did she not realize that caregiving was a derogatory term at all? If everything is successful, the shares will be divided into two parts. Sueling's slender fingers rested on the document and looked at Wang Yi indifferently. Miss, wouldn't she feel like she's losing? Although Wang Yi does not often come into contact with these things, she also understands that if this company is founded, holding 20% of the shares is enough to make herself a prestigious figure. Not a loss, have you considered it? Sui Ling didn't say much, half propped up her face, with a cold expression. She lacked patience when facing people other than tasks, and her voice was a bit impatient. Wang Yi was very confident that if he hesitated for a moment longer, Sui Ling would get up and leave, and quickly agreed. No one likes things that get twice the result with half the effort. Having obtained the result, Sui Ling licked her lips slightly, her expression relaxed, and her eyes and tails were tinged with a hint of joy. Wang Yi returned to the door of Wen Jinx's room, feeling even more convinced that her decision to follow Sui Ling was the right one. Sui Ling wants to start a company, but neither she nor Wen Jinxa is suitable for appearances. So she turned her mind to the bodyguard next to her. Don't invest any money in Wang Yi, just let him come forward to deal with external affairs at critical moments and pretend to be the boss of the company. After solving the issue of starting a company, Sui Ling has been feeling down and living a lazy and scattered life. School home school home, the days of salted fish life make 1087, an active worker, simply can't stand it. Have you ever thought about the purpose of our coming here? Sui Ling sat in front of the computer, with a faint and lazy expression, but her movements did not stop. Her fair and slender hands seemed to shake the phantom quickly. Turn the table Sui Ling replied to the daily question of 1087 as usual. Do you know you're not going yet? The sharp childlike voice echoed non-dot-stop in the system space, and the wings of the 1087 trembled rapidly, shining brightly on its body, making it look very irritable. Aren't I doing it now? You've been lying down for a few days. If you don't want to see Wen Jingsa, you should also go and trip Shinchinua. Sueling's clear pupils reflect a dense network of codes, with a wooden face perfunctory 1087. How could a kind dot hearted person like me make a stumbling block for a delicate and weak little white flower? Dot. You're a kind ghost. 1087 knew it couldn't persuade it, but it also started to mess up. When it reached the same posture as Sui Ling, it comfortably squinted its eyes. This reclining posture is really comfortable. Dot. Little things change their faces quite quickly. Sui Ling patiently typed the code and then went out with her phone. It's already Sunday today, and Sui Ling promised Shin's father to go to the company once a week, so he had no choice but to leave. Uncle Wang is not here, and Sui Ling can only take a ride to the Shin group alone. Arriving at the Shin family, Sui Ling elegantly and calmly stepped into the door, but was stopped by the front desk. Last time, Su Li led the way, and Sui Ling was able to reach the top floor smoothly. However, this time she came alone, and it was normal for her to be stopped. Sui Ling stood in front of the platform, silently waiting for the news to be transmitted, her figure standing tall and distant. Drop the specially designed CEO elevator lights up, but it's not Shen Fu who comes out. Sui Ling didn't look up and grabbed her phone. Suddenly, she felt like someone was staring at her. When she looked up, she saw Shen Qingyue, who had just stepped out of the CEO's elevator. She was dressed in a slim-fitting white dress, with an incredibly delicate posture, but she looked proud with her head held high, and her gaze toward Sui Ling contained a hint of contempt. How did this little thing drag like this? Who gave her a sense of superiority? Sui Ling looked at Shen Qingyue expressionlessly, her eyes calm and calm, like the vast sea, forever calm and calm. 
Just as Shen Qingyue came down for a while, many people came along to please him. The plan Miss made this time is simply amazing, there is no flaw in it. The young lady is not only beautiful, but also full of talent, which really makes us feel inferior. That's right, Miss is like a fairy from the sky. Shen Qingyue is just an 18.year.old child who grew up in the palm of her hand. She has a proud and obedient personality. Everyone knows the characteristic of Shen Qingyue, and following her closely, they are more willing to please a little girl than working hard day after day. Sui Ling stood there watching for a long time, her fingers resting on her wrist bone, tapping gently without stopping. Suddenly, a gentle and beautiful smile appeared at the corner of her mouth, and her eyes curved, very soothing to the heart. Dot. It's starting. It's starting. We're starting to get into trouble. Nestled in the space, 1087 felt excited as he watched Sui Ling's warm smile. After being taught a lesson by Sui Ling to two people, the clever 1087 understood a truth. The better the smile of the host of Sui Ling, the more brilliant it becomes, and the more ruthless the knife is stabbed. Think of it as blind, thinking that this gentle and kind appearance is her true personality. Hashtag the blind and dark history is unbearable to look back on hashtag hashtag light a pillar of wax for Miss Shin Qingyue hashtag, end of this chapter.